Shalom, shalom and good morning. God bless you and welcome to Command Your Morning. I believe you have woken up well. God has taken good care of you and that God's purposes for your life shall be established. I believe God's favor is going to work for your good today. Today we're going to share from the word of God and I believe that God is going to bless us. I'll be reading from Job chapter 14, verse 7 and 8 and I'll be sharing on their topic I'll be back. I will be back in full. But I want us to just go ahead and read this together. It says, For there is hope of a tree, if it be cut down, that it will sprout again, and that the tender branch thereof will not cease. For though the root works old in the earth, and the stalk thereof die in the ground, verse 9, Yet through the scent of water it will bud and spring up and bring boughs like a plant. God bless you very much uh, for the reading of the word. The Bible says in Psalm 119 verse 130 that the entrance of your word, O God, it brings light and gives understanding to the simple. So I believe you're going to receive understanding. You're going to receive light today. And that God's blessing is going to shine on you like never before. We thank God so much indeed because the word of God never fails. His promises are righteous. His word will never ever fall to the ground. It is what God says in Isaiah chapter 55 um, from verse 10 to 12. It says, as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and it doesn't go back there but it waters the earth, causing it to burn, so that it may bring forth seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be, say the Lord. It shall not return to me void or empty, but it will accomplish that which I have sent it to do, and it shall be successful. And you shall go out with joy and be led forth in peace, and the mountains and the hills will break forth into singing. I wanted to appreciate this, that... Whatsoever thing God says, he also goes on ahead to do it. Now, the text scripture that we have just read in Job chapter 14, and the name Job is familiar to most of us because Job is a Hebrew term that means hardship or persecution. Um, and Job was this man who starts out as a rich man. He was blessed. He was the most popular and most famous man in the East. He was literally the greatest man in the East. Uh, but the Bible says through events that are unknown to Job, the devil walks into heaven, as it were, and presents himself amongst the sons of God. And before you know it, the devil is having a conversation with God. And God is asking the devil, have you seen and considered my servant Job that there is no one like him on all the earth? And the devil says, you know, this guy is just acting up. He's just like that because you have blessed him. You have done five fundamental things over him. You have blessed his family. You have kept a hedge around about his home. You have secured the work of his hands. Whatever he does, it prospers. And you have secured even his estate. So there is no hedge. There is no way to penetrate and afflict him. But if you lift up the hedge, if you expose his family, if you expose his health, if you cause him not to prosper, the man will cast you to your face. And so God says, bring it on. Go ahead and test the man. Now, I want you to appreciate this, that God is all-knowing. God is omnipresent, he is omniscient, and he is omnipotent. What that simply means is he's everywhere at the same time. Uh, that does not mean in just geographical time and space, but it also means in the time continuum. He's both present and future at the same time. Uh, but God is omnipotent. He has all power. He has all authority. He has all capacity. And God is omniscient. He knows all things. And so he knew how Job was going to behave. And he knew what the devil was going to do. And so he set boundary lines of what the devil could not cross. And because he knew his servant Job, he allowed the devil to tempt Job 
for a window of not more than nine months. Now, the entire chapter 1 to chapter 38, where God appears to Job, is a window of about nine months. It looks like a lifetime. It looks like the story of Job was just pure suffering, hell, nothing else but pure trouble. But when you look at the book of Job, you appreciate when we meet Job, he's about 70 years of age. He has 10 fully grown children. He is a well-respected, wealthy man, actually the wealthiest man amongst those in the East at that particular time. And so he has lived a life to the full. He has raised his family well. And he is still constantly raising sacrifices to God. So he is anywhere between age 50 and 70. No doubt about it. I doubt he would be less than 50 with full-grown children. Ten of them for that matter. So I think 70 is the correct age to place him. The Bible doesn't say it. That's why I'm just trying to extrapolate. Uh, but the point is, if you go to Job chapter 42, you will see another picture. It says from verse 16, Job 42 verse 16, it says... That after this, God blessed the latter Job, the latter day of Job, more than his beginning. And it also goes on ahead to tell us that the God who blessed his latter end after this also added to Job 140 years. I want us to start by seeing a picture here that the trouble that came did not destroy Job. But it presented God a perfect opportunity for God to bless Job, double his life, give him all his children back, double his wealth, in other words, restore his wealth and give him double for it. And at the end of the day, we find Job is the better than he was in the beginning. So if he started full life, having finished everything, God takes him to where he was and adds him Everything blessed double and doubles his life so he can enjoy his life. Uh, he has already accumulated wealth. Now he starts with his wealth to enjoy it. What a wonderful story about Job. Now many times we just see the trouble. We just see the persecution. We just see the problem. And that's why we need to understand what the scripture says where we have just read. That if a tree it be cut down, it shall sprout again. Most of us consider Job chapter 14 and look at the story and see a suffering Job and see the statement that begins in verse 1 that man that is full, that is born of woman, is full of trouble. His days are few and they're full of trouble. It is like the flower that uh, rises up today and tomorrow is gone. Uh, there's a dimension of truth in that, but if you just think it is trouble only, then you need to relook again at the story of the scripture. Anytime there is trouble, it means that God is preparing something better for you. The momentary afflictions are working for you far greater, exceeding great joy, both in this life and for eternity. And of course, eternity is the best of them all. Even our own Lord Jesus Christ came born in the flesh, born as a human being, suffered, and died. But one of the things about Jesus was he was in the grave. The grave could not hold him for those three days. His suffering was a window. Um, the, 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 the pain he went through, the humiliation, the punchings and all that. It was a day uh, and some hours. The point I just want us to appreciate here is at the end of the day when it is said and done, there is a window of suffering, but it cannot be compared to the benefits, to the overflow, to the good things. Uh, the days are coming when you will be back again. We are in a season of a pandemic. There are challenges raging from all over the place. Some of us have suffered challenges at our working place. And some of us have been rendered redundant. Some of us have received salary cuts. And some of us, our businesses are not doing well. We have actually gone under. And we are wondering how are we going to pay our bills? How are we going to take care of our children? How are things going to work out? I came to speak to you this morning and tell you God's word is sure. His promises are righteous and you will be back. Uh, there is something you need to sense. There's something you need to hear. There's something that God is releasing in your direction. And the Bible calls it water. Now, a tree needs water. 
The Bible says in Psalm chapter 1, Blessed is a man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands on the way of sinners, nor sits on the seat of the scornful, but his delight is on the law of the word of the Lord. This word of God is water. This word of God is refreshing. It says, Meditate on the word of the Lord day and night. He shall be as the tree that is planted by the springs of water. So when you allow yourself to fix your eyes on the word, think the word, believe the word, walk on the word, let the word of God work on your life. Uh, Joshua was told in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, uh, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night. For so shall you then make your way prosperous, and you shall have a good success. Uh, the principle was Joshua had a responsibility and an assignment to take the children of Israel into the promised land. But for him to enter the promised land, for him to fulfill God's appointment, an assignment for him, there were specific things that Joshua had of necessity to do. And God comes to him and tells him, you have to be bold, you have to be strong, you have to be very courageous, and goes on ahead and repeats it four times, says, I have commanded you. But then after all these commands, he then gives him the key for him to walk in boldness, in courage, and for him to be strong. And this is the word of God. Because it doesn't matter what happens somewhere along the line. As long as you are meditating and cogitating and ruminating and regurgitating the word of God as it were. You will be back. It doesn't matter what the enemy has done. You will still be back. And I've come to speak to somebody this morning and tell you. Yes, we will be back. After this pandemic, we will still be there. It's going to go away, but we will be there. In Micah uh, chapter 7, verse 7 and 8, the Bible says, Do not gloat over me, O my enemy, or do not rejoice over me, O my enemy. In other words, uh, don't write me off yet. I'll still be back. Uh, for though I will sit in the darkness, the Lord will be my light. And though I fall, I will arise. In other words, I will be back, enemy. You may plot and counterplot. You may do all that you want to do. Uh, but today, I stand to declare I will be back. Uh, the spirit of fear is almost strangulating the people. And uh, when this pandemic started, one of the things that actually was most, um, uh, so to speak, amazing about the time was what fear was doing to people it because fear has torment the bible says in first john chapter 4 of verse 18 that perfect love casts away fear uh, but fear hath torment so whenever torment whenever fear comes in it brings torment so you need to understand torment will be brought by a spirit of fear and so i've watched um how people have behaved when people really didn't know what COVID is about, how people behaved, how people closed themselves, how some died of starvation, how some lost their livelihoods because of the spirit of fear. Uh, some were actually literally killed by the fear itself. What am I talking about? Uh, just consider for a moment, um, there were videos that went across, um, some were viral. I remember a specific one, there was this uh, matatu, uh, an ember sava matatu. Some of us may have seen it then. And there was this man who fainted in the matatu. And the people came who were donning all these uh, PPEs from head to toe. And they came with, with, this, with, with the disinfectants and they sprayed the disinfectant. Then they disinfected the body bags as people were standing on the sidelines. Some were filming, and I think the person who sent that video was also on the sidelines, just filming it from the pavement. And then they, both, they, they went on ahead to disinfect the, the body bag, and then they put the body there, sprayed some more, zipped the thing, you know, and carried him away. Uh, a long story short, uh, when they tested the body, because I tried to follow up the story a little bit, I discovered that the man they discovered didn't have COVID-19. He didn't die out of COVID-19. Uh, matter of fact, 
there is high likelihood that the disinfectant and the spray after he had fainted may have actually finished the job. Of course, they won't say that, but that's one of the challenges. Uh, same week, there was another story yet again. This one happened in Kericho. And in Kericho, uh, there's a certain gentleman by name of Keegan, and he also collapsed, and he was carried and taken to the mortuary. And when they took him to the mortuary, the attendants uh, suspected that he was possibly um, dead because of COVID, and so they were trying to get his body preserved. And in the process, somebody cut his uh, um, ankle to try and pump some formalin in there. And as soon as they cut that part, uh, the man was not dead. He felt the pain and came to, you know. Uh, these are true stories that happened. Some of us who were familiar with the Times last year, um, it was in the newspapers and all that. Uh, but what am I saying? There are people who almost were killed because people were too afraid, too afraid to confirm that people were actually dead, too afraid to distinguish between those who have fainted and those who have dead, died. Nobody wants to get close to them. People are too quick to use disinfectants and all those kind of things. Uh, there's a lot of stigma. Um, those people who lost relatives in the early part of the pandemic know the stigma. You couldn't even attend the funeral of your own father, mother, brother, sister, close relative or friend or even husband or wife uh, because of the spirit of fear and many have been devastated. So it's been a devastating season. Uh, the spirit of fear has really gripped many people. But here we are presenting the gospel of Jesus Christ, presenting the word of truth that even in the midst of the challenges, in the midst of the problems that we are facing even up to this particular time, yet there is the scent of water that is coming. If you will believe the word of God, if you would trust the unchanging and unfailing truth, then there is something that God is able to do to bring healing and transformation in your life. If you can call on the Lord, if you can trust in the Lord, the story of Job will become your story. Uh, not just the nine months of his suffering, but the 140 years plus of the after this. Every one of us has a before this, a this, and an after this. I'm here to declare that you will be back in the after this. Right now, you are in a this season that is not palatable, that is not very nice. You're going through challenges, but please don't give up, don't quit, don't throw in the towel, don't feel it's over because it's not yet over. God has a plan, and the plan that He has for you is a good plan to give you peace and an expected good end. All things will work together for your good. So keep believing, keep trusting. Hope in the Lord, look up to God, and I want you to know God's purposes for your life will be established. I'm Othniel Mobili, and I'm declaring peace, prosperity, health, and wealth, welfare, well-being, be well-fed, be whole. May you be complete, may you have nothing lacking, nothing missing, and nothing broken. That's the word shalom for you. And I believe God's favor is upon you. I want to pray with you, and may you put your faith and the son of the living God, your future is bright. Father, we thank you and we honor you today. Thank you for those who have joined in today. And I want to speak your word of your blessing and your favor over their lives. That Lord, as they look to you, as they trust in you, as they call on you, Lord, that as this word comes to them and as they make a determination to seek your face, to seek your word, to look up to you, that the scent of water will come in. And even in the places where they may have been cut down, the places where it looked like their life has ceased, as it were, based on the multiples of challenges, where they thought their business, their dreams, their visions have been cut short. Lord, at the scent of water, let this be their reality, that they will be back. And not just back where they were, but they will be back fulfilling great things, experiencing supernatural religions of your blessing and your favor. You are the Lord God Most High, and you have a great purpose and plan for our lives. And today we want to thank you because you will show yourself strong on our behalf and your purposes shall stand. So may you be glorified in our lives. I pray for those who need the Lord Jesus in their lives. May you touch them, may you save them, may you deliver them, and may you do a new thing over them. My God, may you be glorified, may you be exalted, for we love you and we thank you. And this day, let it be a blessed, marvelous day, and let your people go out with joy, be led forth in your peace, 
and let the mountains and the hills break forth into your singing according to your word and let them be celebrated in this time because of the great things you're doing in their lives in Jesus' name. So God bless you. Have a pleasant and a blessed day and God give you victory. Keep hoping, keep trusting. You will be back. If you've been cut, the scent of water is here. Your future is bright. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.